Hello everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. As we continue our series on the black family, the disintegration of the black family and uh, things that are related to that, I'm going to segue out for a second and focus on something specifically uh, that I'm passionate about that I have been talking about for years. Um, again, if you believe in the work we're doing from the research center on down to the programs we implement into the community, show your love, show your support because there's so much work to be done. There's so much to do. And I'm not gonna go into detail if you follow me. I've been doing this in this in this space for 13 plus years and I've been doing it in a period for over 30. Um, I'm, you research me if you don't know for the guys who follow me for years you know what we do we've been here if you still been around for years it's obviously some value that we're bringing to the table show your love and support uh, but I want to talk to you specifically today about something again that I'm immensely passionate about and I don't think gets enough attention not only from mainstream media but not even not even from blacks as a collective we make a lot of noise about certain things but we aren't making enough noise about this and that is the tens of thousands of black women that are currently missing uh it's estimated nine anywhere from 65 to 75 thousand black women are currently missing in the u.s some for years what is even more alarming is that while black women make roughly make up roughly about seven percent of the u.s population um our women make up 35%, almost 35% of the number of women who go missing every year. Now, to exacerbate this, there is a lack of coverage, there is a lack of interest, and uh, mainstream media doesn't cover it in the same way that white women who go missing are covered. We all know about the, the, the I cannot think of the little uh, young lady's name who went missing her boyfriend went on that her went on the trip and they went missing and it was a national hunt it was everywhere it was the biggest thing one white woman and the whole country got shook same thing with Natalie Holloway uh, I'm not in any way attempting to mitigate or minimize their missing to their families they're important but what we got to understand is the black women who go missing are important to their families. There are so many different things that play into this. One of the things is in uh, important elements and components that we need to understand is that mainstream doesn't cover it for a couple of reasons. There is a natural devaluation of black women. There's a natural objectification of black women. There's a natural unspoken narrative that if a black woman is missing, it's probably because she put herself in a precarious situation. When actually... If she didn't go on her will, it doesn't matter what she did. If she didn't go on her will, her missing is an issue and it needs to be addressed. Should we address uh, better safety mechanisms and protocols within the black community? Should we address certain things that may put our women at risk? Should we address? Absolutely. But it does not say because these things need to be addressed that for some reason we don't care about what's happening with our black women and that they don't care. Well, see, the first thing is the people who watch these media outlets are predominantly white. We live in a white racial care society where the predominant uh, majority are white. They have over 100 million plus. We have 40 million. So um, the interest in what's going on in their white world dictates how the media sets up their um, coverage of stories. You have to understand that this is about money. Everybody believes everything is about what people are really truly concerned about. No, it's about what people will gravitate to to create the capacity for ad revenue when it comes to the media. White people will tune in and lose their mind about a white woman missing. Not so with a black woman. The immediate thing that comes to a white mind when a black woman is missing is she must have been or she must have did. And then they start the disqualification, disqualification process. Now, you know what's worse to me is that far too many uh, blacks follow suit. 
Why aren't we screaming at the top of our lungs? Why aren't we flabbergasted at the idea that we actually have that many women missing? Why is it, why aren't we asking the logical questions as to why is the number of black women missing so disproportionately aligned in correspondence or in place with just the position of who and what we are in the total population. You're talking about 7% of the total population makes up 34% of missing women. That's really, really close to what it's like in prison for black men. We make up 6% of the uh, total population, but we make up almost 37, 38% of the prison population, almost 40%. These social dynamics and these social realities are too far beyond statistical significance to call it a coincidence. It's too consistent in its result to say it was just a phenomenon. So we need to ask ourselves first and foremost, the thing we have to look at is inadequate media coverage and public attention. Historically, cases of missing black women have received less media coverage and public attention compared to the cases of individuals from other racial and ethnic backgrounds. The lack of visibility can perpetuate a perception that the lives of black women are undervalued. That's not a perception. That's actual reality. The same amount of attention isn't given to black women, so you have to ask why. That is not the same level of value placed on black life in general and in black white. We can see this in uh, the number of uh, deaths while giving birth or uh, immediately after giving birth for black women versus other races, other races in, in specific white, white women. The level of care and concern uh, associated with uh, patient complaints of women who are either giving birth or in the uh, post uh, birthing stage, postpartum stage of delivery. They are not viewed, not handled, not dealt with, not taken seriously in the same manner that white women are. So it, it, it's this general universal notion that black women don't carry the same value as white women and what we must understand as blacks is that while that might suck while that is definitely not something that we should be okay with we must first deal with the enemy within we must first deal with this demon of um, apathy within the collective uh, the fact that it doesn't bother us until it's us that we have been conditioned not to see the connectivity they'll tell you all day long that it's not about race but watch a white woman go missing and watch how they behave versus a black woman missing and it tells you all day long it definitely matters we're not in a post-racial society we're in an evolved racial caste system that presents the idea that all things are equal when it's not and if the thing is not to get caught up in throwing uh throwing out the idea it's unfair oh well it's me but to sit up and say if they're not going to level the playing field we have to we have to become more responsible more engaged more aware uh we need to be responsible for ourselves we need to be out and creating mechanisms and then if they're not going to look for us then we need to have a mechanism and a create our own mechanisms first and foremost that's the first thing that we need to do that's something that we have to have in place the next thing is law enforcement and biases and disparities law enforcement does not take the reporting of missing black women the same young black girls are immediately uh ca classified or categorized as runaways every day literally i get a minimum of 10 missing black girls when i say black girls under the age of 18 so that just in that category alone, that's this crazy disparity going on. And what we must realize is that human trafficking, sex trafficking is literally the second largest uh, illegal industry on the planet. It's bigger than the dope game. The only the only industry, illegal industry on a global level that's bigger than human trafficking is weapons trafficking. 
And so what we have to understand is there's literally a business for taking lives and they target people who are going to be least likely looked for or that's going to create less of a ripple. And so that's one of the reasons why you have this disparity from 7% of the total population to 35%, almost 35% of the uh, number of women that go missing every year is because people don't make enough noise about black girls. Nobody's tearing up the world looking for uh, thousands upon thousands of black girls. One girl goes missing and the entire nation turns itself upside down to find her. Natalie Holloway went missing in an entirely different country. And they are still doing stories on it. And documentaries on trying to get to the truth. This guy has moved to another place, got arrested for doing something crazy over there. And they still think it. But the whole story is being told. There's this big interest in one white woman missing. And yet there are 75,000 of our women missing and not a bleep. That's another reason why we need our own media. That's another reason why we need to take Sister Neota Yorora a lot more serious in her efforts of creating black media as not just an idea or a po podcast platform, but an entire mechanism, an entire thing. I'm talking about our own servers, our own everything. That's something that this, she's been doing. Uh, I thank God for the partnership that uh, I have developed along with uh, Dr. Michael K. Blanchard in doing this thing and others, you know, this thing goes back far and we've got to start taking this thing serious. We are going to have to take this thing serious. Look, then uh, despite law enforcement, there's also the racial profiling thing. That's just this idea that black people do stuff to get themselves in the situations. It's the immediate assumption when a white woman goes missing, foul play. The immediate assumption when a black woman goes missing, she got herself into something. Then you place that with the natural devaluation of the black woman and the black woman's value in society as a whole. And that's just not enough resources, energy, effort, and time and idea uh, to invest in finding this black woman. If she wants to be found, she'll be found. You know, um, in many instances, they may have been murdered. In most instances, they have been kidnapped. In some instances, they are being held against their will by lovers. All of this stuff is not justification for acting like they're not missing. But here's the problem. If you don't apply pressure to something, it exists in the, fluid, the fluidity of its natural being. The natural being of how this society treats women is, black women is, they're here but oh well. When things are going good for them, cool. We'll let them contribute. When things are going bad for them, that's their problem. And if we don't ever apply pressure to that, if we don't ever apply pushback to that, if we don't ever in our own behavior say our women matter, the system will never respect our women. Other people will never respect our women. It has to come from within. It has to come first and foremost from black men. We are the protectors. And we have to see every black woman that goes missing as a failure of us to protect our communities, to protect our homes it's easy to sit up and say they shouldn't have been they shouldn't have been they shouldn't have been that's not one of that one damn one of my kids that something can happen to and i'm gonna say they shouldn't have been now i may tell them that once i deal with the situation i may say you shouldn't have done that but i'm never gonna sit up and say oh well they're on their own and the same way has to be in generally speaking about blacks, we have to understand we're coming from a unique situation. The way we behave, as I have been pointing out in these series, is tied to our trauma. It's tied to our socioeconomic reality. There's just certain types of behaviors, certain types of things that's going to come from broken homes and poverty. We need to understand that so that we can deal with it. That's one of the things that my research does is it points out these different uh, impacts and the implications of these realities so that we can understand what we're facing and why things are. We have to stop seeing things as anomalies, stop seeing things that as uh, consequences and coincidences and all these other things. We need to start asking why. So when something is, isn't what it should be, we have to ask why. 
then we have to look and search for our origin and causality. That for uh, that's this law of universal law of cause and effect it says if something is happening, there's a reason it's happening. If I don't like what's happening, I find the reason it's happening, and I deal with the reasoning. I deal with the cause. I deal with the origin. Same thing with illness. You don't treat the symptoms. That's what. Um, pharmaceutical drugs do they mask symptoms they deal with symptoms they make you feel better but they're not dealing with the origin or the cause uh that's why they didn't like they don't like uh homeopathic and naturopathic doctors like dr cb like dr joseph mccurl why because they're pointing you to the cause they're helping you saying i'm not just going to deal with this here i'm going to deal with this where at some point i won't need the medication i'm going to heal myself by dealing with origin where well, you deal with social issues in the same manner you sit up and say okay this is the cause what are we going to do we're going to have to interrupt the cause if the cause is poverty then we interrupt the cause of poverty by discovering how to overcome poverty and it's possible i have presented countless amount countless uh um, presentations uh, and a wealth of information and data via books, via lectures, via of conferences and everything else on the way to approach the wealth thing. I've given you books, The War on Black Wealth, Breaking the Code of Generational Wealth. I've given you courses, The Path to Generational Wealth. I've given you uh, ideas and, 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 and looks inside of what's going on. All of it's there, but you have to take action on it, right? So my thing is when I look at the fact that black women are missing i take it personal here's why if i'm walking with my wife and a guy comes along and pats my wife on the ass number one is there's a natural instinct in me that's going to defend her honor but there's also the the primal part of me that's looking at it and saying he just disrespected me because I'm standing right here. So he didn't just disrespect and mishandle my wife. He disrespected me and ultimately in his action said, I don't fear you. I don't respect you. you have, you're insignificant. And so we have to look at that. If they're coming in and snatching our women at that rate, they're telling us the men, we don't have no, we have no fear of what your men are going to do to us for how we handle you. And that is something that we have to look at. We have to be willing to sit up and say, not on my watch. We need to say that on a bunch of different things, but we definitely have to say that in how we're looking at this. Some of the things are a part of the systemic chaos that comes from poverty, which is a socially engineered perspective of the black experience. We have poverty in every race group, but when you come to per capita, blacks are at the bottom of the socioeconomic ladder. And so we have to ask ourselves why. And then we have to say that a part of this issue with missing black women is this socioeconomic influence. That just certain behaviors, certain risks, certain exposures that are going to take place in a impoverished, unprotected situation or environment. We need to be aware of that. We need to be willing to deal with that. Um, community impact we're not completely engaged at a level on a community level to make our presence felt collectively our collective presence isn't making the push that it needs to make we are going to have to become committed financially we're going to have to become committed socially we're going to have to become committed from the perspective of education we need to be preparing and training and establishing a sense of self purpose and identity in our youth at an early age so that their movements are different than what we're seeing now their expectations and standards are different from what we're seeing now that's a problem so again i'm challenging every last one of you it's time to change the narrative. And we do that by being directly engaged in some way or another. The passive way of doing it is sitting up, reading books, talking about it in, in, in different environments, the barbershop, the cigar lounge, uh, on social media, but not doing anything of significance to actually move and take action. I actively get engaged in helping find young women. We find some, but there are way too many that we aren't able to locate. Um, but I know that with the right training, 
uh, for investigation, and and that's Dr. Blanchard's uh, background is investigation. He is a former uh, police officer, a former uh, investigator for uh, Human and Health Services. Uh, he knows how to implement that, and we have other people who I can bring in as well. I am very, very uh, well trained and prepared in profiling, in establishing uh, victimology, and being able to identify the problems or the prob the probability of certain particular situations happening, where likely things might happen, what are we looking for, all those things. We have the core element to sit up and create our own system so that we can stop begging other people to take care of us, stop begging other people to care about our mi missing women, stop begging other people to care about our missing babies. We are responsible for that. We have the training. We've just been using the training the majority of our careers to help them. And if you're getting paid to do your job and that's something you're passionate about, I'm not even raining on that. But you can't not have the skill set and not be willing to use it to help self and help those who look like you, help those with unique and similar experiences to yours. Those are the ones that definitely need you on deck. That's why I commend the work, and I'm so glad to call him a friend, Dr. Cl Dr. Blanchard, because he literally walked away from a police career because he couldn't advocate the way he wanted to advocate. And he saw so many things that wasn't right, and it became a threatening endeavor for him. So he had to walk away from it, but he didn't stop. He found other ways to help. He stopped, found other ways to get involved. He's one of the most consistent in caring and giving. And we don't always see the eye to eye. That's one of the reasons I actually love him, because he challenges me. He iron sharpens iron. We're not supposed to agree on everything. We're supposed to say, hey, you didn't think about this. What about this? You're only seeing it from that perspective. We challenge each other. But together, when it's time to go to work and put in work together, we are able to do it. And we need more of that. That's the challenge. That's what I'm, that's what I'm challenging everybody to do to come together. Man, we have so many things that we could be doing through the Odyssey Project. We just don't have the backing. Um, and, I, and I'm all for helping any other group that's doing the same thing. Hey, we need to get together. We need to come together. We've got to care enough about our people that we become the resource. And then by the very way of doing that, we will open up the conversation for a new standard on a national level across r racial boundaries where we can sit up and say, okay, our women are being valued now in other communities. But we can't demand that when we're not handling business in our community ourselves. Uh, that's gonna be it for then. Again, if you want to show your love, show your support for what we're doing uh, in this area and so many other areas in the community consistently each and every day, look in the description box and uh, donate. Don't pass the buck. Don't assume somebody else is going to do it. We have a big problem with that. Sit up and say, I'm going to be a part of the solution today and I'm going to give. Uh, on that note, look, I'm out of here. I hope that this helps. We're going to keep going on this series about the family, but I really had to kind of segue out of family in specific and deal specifically with our women because this is an issue, and I'm saying it because some stuff came across my desk today. Yes. And it's like, my God. And it's like one of the most consistent. It's like, what are we doing with it? Because if anybody else is seeing what I'm seeing, why are we so quiet? On that note, look, I'm going to get ready to get out for you guys. Have an unbelievable remainder of your day. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They said I should give it up like yeah, that just ain't good enough. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here, dropping in with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time you know outside of the businesses that i run like myriad business solutions the visionetics institute odyssey media group i also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in houston dallas and other areas uh, i'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the odyssey project is doing in the inner cities uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage 
uh, initiative and restoring ghetto for ghetto's forgotten daughters which is a program focused on helping young girls but boys as well suffering from childhood sexual abuse uh, rape molestation domestic abuse uh, absentee fatherhood and so many other things uh, the information will be in the box thank you